Hi everyone, welcome to the State of Marketing Operations. This is a session that is kind of the summary of all of the things that I've seen in the overall world of B2B marketing, marketing technology, B2B tech companies. Over the last seven years of having run a Tumos, uh, which is a marketing technology consulting company, I have found a lot of different patterns and I've found a lot of different um, as marketing operations has grown up, we've seen a lot of different ways that it can grow out. And I've been paying attention to how do we create, we as the actual persons, practitioners, thought leaders within marketing operations, how do we actually create a community of marketing operations practitioners, the actual building vocation of marketing operations, and the actual practice of marketing operations. So I've been focusing on this for the last seven years as I've built a Tumos uh, and been consulting with a lot of uh, very large and, and pretty impressive kind of clients uh, that are advanced in the marketing scheme as well as marketing operations, being early investors into marketing technology, seeing what the difference is, measuring the results, and actually being able to implement marketing technology on a larger scale to impact organizations in marketing overall. Um, Atumos, some background about Atumos, we do uh, marketing operations consulting, marketing technology consulting uh, for high growth startups, uh, larger mid-market companies, and enterprise kind of cutting edge. I like to think that the way that we differentiate ourselves as a, as a consulting company is we work with the cutting edge and we work on bringing people from one maturity stage where they currently are and dragging them into the next maturity stage, which is associated with uh, the actual practice of modern marketing within those and between those to the point where we can be able to say marketing technology is the forcing function in order for these organizations to grow and improve overall and that's what marketing operations is doing. So what we've done over the last six years as a Tumos, we have been working with really advanced clients um, being long-term strategic partners, helping them build everything out about marketing operations. We help them with thought leadership design, process engineering, execution, campaign design, everything that's associated with marketing technology and marketing operations. I consider Atumos to be uh, deeply within this and to be responsible for anything that happens there. Um, overall right now, uh, we, we as a company for Atumos, I've, I've been focused on growing us over the last six, six years into a, a company that focuses on our client results specifically um, so that we can take ownership over our clients revenue um, as well as just being an execution hub for their marketing department. Now there are a few things that I want to address during this talk. There have, I've been thinking about this quite a bit in terms of the state of marketing operations. I've seen how it's gone and I've seen the explanations on the highest levels of CMO, on the bottom levels, everywhere around in B2B, we've seen and I've been working through the marketing operations, how it fits into the picture. So there are a few things that I wanna share with you. These are things that I've found are easier to explain what we do, what our industry is, as well as what we can do and how we can empower marketing operations to be a significant part of marketing departments uh, not just now for a little flash and pan, but to actually be a long-term and a sustainable vocation that will live multiple years, multiple generations, as well as actually impacting the way that marketing is done in a day-to-day -day basis. So there are four pieces on the agenda that I want to talk about today. We have marketing technology. I want to talk a little bit about the verbiage as well as what marketing technology is, how I see it as related to marketing operations. Second one, we're going to get into what I've determined to be the four pillars of marketing operations. These are the four primary driving features of marketing operations that all organizations need to take a look at and actually cover. Um, and usually I'd say that a lot of these are covered, but we'll, we'll get into that as we do. Um, third step is we're gonna be talking about marketing operations in real life and actual organizations. How do you build from zero to one marketing operations person? How do you build a marketing operations team that's generalized? And then how do you build the enterprise scalability model, which is to say specialized teams um, that can grow scalably within their organizations. And as specialists, as specialists, different departments, sub-departments, marketing operations, and individual teams and roles on marketing operations. And then for, finally, the, the fourth piece that we're gonna be talking through 
is some tools to empower marketing operations because this is one that I find quite a bit of interest in. Um, we as marketing operations practitioners and vocation persons um, really need to figure out how do we use marketing operations. It's not defined within the overall picture of marketing really well right now. And so we need to do a combination of convincing people that this certain squares for marketing operations, we should be doing this. These are the tools that we can use. And this is how we get more respect at the table of marketing so that we can be seen not just, uh, marketing operations isn't just seen as a cost center, but also actually driving the value of the company. So that's the agenda for the next four pieces here. Let's jump in. First piece, MarTech, and let's talk about verbiage. So there I think is quite a bit of knowledge overall and emphasis on MarTech. Uh, you know it, Scott Brinker, we know the ridiculous landscape of tens of thousands of different vendors. And so people say, you know, we talk to clients, we talk to people who are just starting to build marketing operations. They say, great, what is MarTech? What is MarTech? Where do you fit in with this? And so what I find is that there are a few different answers to this. Um, and I'm going to draw it on the board here for you. Uh, but there are kind of three major elements that are important about this. Um, we have a CDP or data warehouse. We have a marketing automation platform. And then we have a CRM here. So what these are all together um, is what I call the RevTech tripod. These individual systems end up being kind of the source of truth individually that drive the major ecosystem of the overall rev tech world. And so when we say, you know, you say, great, we are a marketing technology consulting company. What do you do when you do marketing technology consulting? Well, really what I say is we do MarTech consulting. MarTech consulting very precisely is this slice where we're focused on a marketing automation platform in the center. Um, this is, for example, Marketo and how we're talking about this world. This is the center of MarTech. This is the core. And then around that, we also have what I consider to be these little planets and little moons that are orbiting this marketing automation platform. Um, and this world is MarTech overall. And it becomes um, our job as marketing technologists and marketing operations individuals to take this MarTech world and organize it and make it sensical and make it as positively correlated with growth and revenue for the company as possible. So this is what I say, it's, it's MarTech. It's not just we're responsible for MarTech, it's MarTech is actually centered around a marketing automation platform. And then every other technology such as lead enrichment, as deduplication, such as um, an SLA management tool, infraction tool, anything else like that, those are all complementary te technologies. But primarily a MarTech person, a marketing operations person, is dealing precisely with this marketing automation platform. And then everything else is kind of the spoke that comes off, all the other related technology. But the core of a MarTech person, in my opinion, and in this world, is in the source of truth for marketing, which is this ecosystem here, as well as making sure that the configuration on all of this MarTech is as efficient and effective as possible. So that's, that's kind of the microcosm view. You see in this kind of world where we have this pink here, this is what a MOPS person is really responsible for. Now, in terms of trends that I see overall, you say, that's great. Well, what about RevOps? What about everything else that's kind of tech, you know, complementary, we have sales tech, everything else like that, those end up being their own circles. So for example, I would consider in this diagram that this is sales ops responsibility. Um, and this is sales tech overall. These are things like um, sales loft, like Engageo, anything else that's kind of helpful, enrichment tools, anything else. All of these similarly are circling around the CRM, usually Salesforce or Dynamics or whatever it is that you actually choose. Um, but these are the two distinct worlds. We have a MarTech world and we have a sales tech world. Um, and these are discrete. Now, where I see this actually going in reality is there's an improvement that I, I consider, you know, makes up, as I call this overall diagram, the RevTech tripod. And that includes 
the, and this is generally where I see all these companies are going also, the expansion is from MarTech and sales tech to include this kind of don't know how to deal with it situation up here where we're talking, uh, talking very precisely about this world of the CDP slash data warehouse. And this is where I think MarTech is really improving and getting to the point where it's going to be evolving in, is the large companies deal with a MarTech, a marketing automation platform that is one-to-one -one synced, if possible, with a CRM such as Salesforce. And these are synced back and forth, hence the bi-directional arrows here. And then really, I think the evolution on top of this is that uh, Marketo, marketing automation platform, all of this data should be running into a data warehouse or a data lake or a customer uh, data platform, a CDP. This is the kind of evolution that I see things going because what we need is we need all of our reporting to happen off of this data warehouse and the CDP as a combination of CRM and marketing automation. And there are some advantages that will happen as a, as a result of this with more actual scale and everything else and ability to this, we can add on top of this CDP or data warehouse analytics reports. We can see production tables that can sync back into marketing automation. Um, that is a, a point of basically, for example, being able to do more intelligent prescriptive scoring, anything else like this. This, this is kind of where the world is going right now. I think there's very little conversation about this data warehouse at exactly this moment. I think it's going to balloon. I see all of our advanced clients are moving towards this tripod model. And this is really where you get the infrastructure set up bi-directional between all of these three. And this is where we can see the biggest improvement in how their overall functionality is works. This gives us an ability to do data science on top of data warehouse into production table fields that can sync back into marketing automation that can then drive the targeting of marketing automation based on the intelligence of all of these systems. And you can also see, I don't actually have it written in here, uh, but this can include things like this data warehouse, including accounting numbers, including product usage, um, all of this happens in the data warehouse. And what we want to do is take all that intelligence, spit it back into summary fields, scores, and targeting uh, fields, sync those back into your marketing automation system so that you can run those in that marketing automation system. And this is a key piece I see as a RevTech tripod. This is where the world is going in the future. And so then let's, let's move into the next world here. So this is a lot of detail, uh, but what we want to talk about is really this honing in on marketing technology. It's, it's less concern about all the other things that we're doing there and more about how do we narrow in on this MarTech world and really optimize this world. So um, this, as I say, this is you know, marketing automation is the center and then everything else is a complementary technology that we need to worry about. And this is the world of MarTech. And you can see it also in this diagram that I have on the slide here. And so common questions. So this is usually how I assert, you know, what's the difference between MarTech? Where is MarTech? What's the solidification of it? How does it actually work? Uh, I say that we have these, this three different domains that we have, turns into an overall RevTech tripod. And then with that, uh, we can actually look at the persons who are running it. And those are marketing operations. That is, in my opinion, we have this thing called marketing technology. It's running into these different companies. We have it in B2B marketing. And what, what we have is the technology is really talked about in the world right now into the ecosystem. Uh, we have the uh, chief MarTech, Scott Brinker, the overall landscape, everything else like this. There's a lot of conversation and focus specifically on the technologies, which is to say the companies that create the technologies, the SaaS companies. Now, what I see in the future here is a switch and a conversation change from MarTech, from those companies, and there are you know, all of the map of them. The conversation has been on that. What we're seeing right now is a switch into a conversation about marketing operations, the actual team and the actual people who run that MarTech and that MarTech stack. And the idea is that the marketing operations people are the ones who are going to be the long-standing piece of this industry and, and building this vocation. It's not the MarTech, you know, we have MarTech, there's so many different MarTechs happening, this expansion, this ecosystem is shrinking, uh, shrinking and expanding at the same time it's its own living, breathing organism. 
Marketing operations, though, as opposed to an individual tech being a flash in the pan and going away, marketing operations will be the vocation that continues and will be the multi-generational vocation. And this is, I think, marketing operations is really where the true value of MarTech comes from because then we're talking about individuals who can run the technology, who can think about strategy, digital marketing strategy in terms of this actual technology. It's the bottoms up approach from making sure we have the foundational stable tool creation all the way up to being informing our, our company strategy, our marketing, our sales strategy, uh, our overall roadmaps, everything else like this. So when I'm describing what do I do as a marketing operations person, I say, I'm in, I say marketing operations is responsible for the running, configuration, administration, and optimization of MarTech for companies. We all know this, this is a common thing. So let's talk about marketing operations a little bit more out of the MarTech world. There are, as I've seen, and I've been doing a lot of thinking on this overall, four major pillars to marketing operations. There's platform operations, there's campaign operations, there's marketing intelligence, and there's marketing engineering. Now we also have teams associated with that as a Tumos, but I think the real way that this works in, in the rest of the world is there is an idea of this MOPS manager who is a generalist. And there is this MOPS manager as a percentage of how much is platform operations. And platform really means administration, governance, uh, as well as architecture. It's the hardcore marketing operations. It's, I, I would venture to say, what many of us aspire to be architects, actual building and making significant progress in terms of increasing our ability to do marketing better, as well as more marketing overall for the same or less cost. So marketing operations manager has a combination of platform responsibilities, campaign responsibilities, um, marketing analytics responsibilities, um, as well as occasionally individual dev requirements um, that come up. So a marketing operations manager, generally a lot of companies start with this perception, their first hire is a marketing operations manager, which is a generalist person. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more here, but I really see that the categories of skill set come into these individual four. Primarily a marketing operations manager, I would say, based on our common knowledge of what a marketing operations manager is. I would say the marketing, mo marketing operations manager in a single title, in a single company, this ends up being about 60% platform operations work. I'd say it's about probably 30% is campaign, and then I'll say around 10% is analytics. Um, this dev hovers around zero on average, but it really surges in individual months when we talk about significant changes, projects, initiatives that we're working on. But these four individual, we have dev, campaign, uh, analytics, and platform. These together shape up the overall responsibilities of marketing operations as a team in the organization reporting into the marketing team. So I, I provided this here, this slide on these four pillars to give you kind of an understanding of what each of these functions really looks at and really focuses on platform, as I say, admin, architect, governance. This is your senior person. This is your person who is an ad administrator who really, really knows the platform perfectly well. This is a platform operations person, someone who can architect, know how the systems interact, and come up with the cleanest code according to what we call um, our individual acronym of SCRIM for the quality, which is to say real quickly, scalable, clear, robust, intelligent, and modular. Um, and, and we try to evaluate and it becomes a platform operations person's job to make sure that any configuration is maximizing these five qualities in whatever configuration we choose. So, I find that there are different skill sets. Platform operations is a systems thinker. It's somebody who can develop things. It's creative persons. It's thinking what is the most elegant system design that we as a team can come up with for how these things work. Coding exposure helps. Really, I consider this to be kind of a low code 
version is a, a common phrase that's popping up here. This is what the platform operations person is. And this is generally where we see to see a, a senior marketing operations resource is generally considered to be and does more platform operations work. Campaign operations. This is a different type of person, a different type of skill. This person needs to be incredibly detail oriented and can't drop anything. Their campaign operations people are dealing with 20 to 100 different campaigns all at one time focused on building, supporting marketing managers, revisions. You have to be a massively detailed and organized person. And that's a different skill set. So for example, I'm, I can be a really good architect. I, I focus and pride myself on my ability to do architecture very well. But when it comes to campaign operations, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible hire. I'm not the right person. I don't have the right characteristics. The attention to detail as well as the ability to manage thousands of things and communication layers and everything else going back and forth at the same time, I'm not good at it. And so instead, I consider that to be a different person. One of the things that I like to talk about uh, is what I've seen in the market and the vocation and the actual job market for this is what I call this marketing operations myth of a generalist. And what I mean by this is I think a lot of companies right now consider marketing operations to be a singular person, a marketing operations person, starting from this campaign level, doing this campaign operations. Um, you know, I, what I see generally is we say, this is a junior person, cops, and then when we have platform operations, we say this is a senior person. Um, but in reality, what I'm finding is that this is a myth that it's the same person. It's not that a junior person starts in campaign operations, building campaigns, and then eventually becomes an architect. It's that they're actually two discrete different specialties and skill sets in individual tracks. And so what I find is that this myth that it's basically one person needs to start at campaign ops and then grow into platform ops and then eventually take over all of this. I think this is really helpful in the actual market, but I find that it's it's more of a, a myth than an actual um, common linear path. It's not a spectrum. It's actually that you have a discrete skill set that you need to practice from zero to 100 in platform operations, and you also have that for campaign operations, and it should be running separately, discreetly at the same time. And so instead of this individual generalist person, I think it makes more sense and the actual sustainable way that this will work as a vocation is to have discrete campaign operations people, discrete platform operations people, discrete intelligence people, which is analytics as well as you know, analysts as well as data science, as well as marketing engineering being its own discrete realm. So um, as you can see, I, I tried to put here on this slide a bunch of different titles that are really common and where I find you know, the most common titles in, in the market right now and what they generally mean um, and where they most, uh, most en masse fall into this categorization. Um, and I want to talk real quick because campaign operations and platform operations, it's quite clear. I think we all know that. I don't think any of that's a major surprise to any of us. But the two that I, I, I think, think are more controversial and I suggest into bringing into this are marketing intelligence because that takes that CDP layer, that data warehouse layer, and makes intelligence out of it. It takes all those disparate systems and it's doing reporting is the most important piece, reporting dashboards and analytics, as well as data science as being another major component of that. And usually I would also consider those to be two different discrete skills and persons within marketing intelligence as a team. You have your analyst team over here, um, and then you would also have uh, next door, shared, partial, whatever you want to consider it, uh, data science here. And so we've started colloquially naming this MI as marketing intelligence, uh, which is to say this is just generally a play off of business intelligence, BI. Um, and from that, we, we can say, I think that this is even its own specialty, is, is MI being a sub-focus of business intelligence 
focus just on marketing. I find that BI people have a really hard time understanding the business implications of what the overall MarTech stack means, where somebody is in a funnel, everything else like this. It ends up being very complex. As opposed to marketing engineering, um, this is where we have a combination. Marketing engineering is dev, just for real quick. We have basically a combination of what I see as being three different people and three different skill sets. We have a front end, which is to say a web designer, an email designer. We have a full stack, and then we have a back end. And these three, I say also, generally for a normal company, you don't really need all of these at all. I mean, mostly, if anything, you're focusing on front end development for landing page and email templates, but you're not really talking about the full stack or the back end. Full stack is when we talk about pre sales tool development. And this is massively helpful, and I think we're also MarTech will be going into the future, um, developing out these pre-sales tools that integrate into your marketing automation platform. Um, that is to say, you know, you want to do a health audit, something else like this, an individual automated tool that's a pre-sales tool, it's a light sales offer. You can do this and it becomes a full stack person's job to build this, uh, this actual tool. That includes interface, that includes um, the actual app as it's built, that includes the back end, that includes the integration with marketing automation. Um, so that's what full stack is. I, I see it being more common in the future, but mostly this is just companies who are heavily, heavily, heavily invested in marketing operations who already have this as a check mark. And then the back end is things about integrations. Middleware uh, is certainly a piece as well as some, some back end integrations that can be better. Um, ETL I would put into this bucket, to be honest. Um, somebody who needs to create and manage that ETL. So looking at this, it was a lot of information overload and I want to give you even more right now, which is I look at and the way that I think about the world of marketing operations is where any of the titles of somebody in marketing operations divide into these four buckets of percentage of time responsibility. And this is a, a map that I can show you here. You can see we have um, a heavy emphasis at the top four roles here on the development marketing operations roles. Then below that we get into platform operations, campaign operations, um, everything that's, I just tried to take every common title so you can look through here and get a little gut sense of, of generally this is the weight of how different companies analyze and place marketing operations depending on the title as you can tell by their understanding and choice of a title. So let's talk about marketing operations in the real world, not just philosophically. Last time we were talking philosophically, now we're talking about how does it actually become an organization? How do we build this? And in this case, I think that there is a, a pretty common path, in my opinion, um, one with the generalist, and then we get into teams, generalist teams, and then we get into specialist teams. And this is how I see the major course um, of evolution on these scaling of marketing operations. So the first thing that you want to do, everyone does, hire a marketing operations manager. This is somebody who can handle both the campaign operations as well as the platform operations, a little bit of analytics, maybe a little bit of dev. That person doesn't really need to know the dev. That's a really hard, hard characteristic Venn diagram to find. But you start with, companies start with this overall generalist. You start with a, a single generalist to run MOPS. Um, so that's the first stage that we have here. That's, that's what we have. That's what most companies have if you have a single full-time marketing operations person, this is probably your model where you have one person doing all of these things. The second evolution of this is to bring on, um, you know, I, I say in this and the title that I have here is a marketing operations specialist. This is to say along the, the myth of a single generalist role of marketing operations. This is a combination of a POPs specialty as well as a campaign operations specialty person. And this is really, um, this is the second step. This is the second hire in marketing operations. The third step that we have on this is when we talk about individual specialized teams. That's when we talk about not just individuals, but POPs having its own team of a certain amount of people, of COPs having its own team, usually much larger because the percentage ratio here is probably something like uh, two to four campaign operations persons to a single platform operations person, depending on the efficiency. Um, so I'd, I'd call this something like a 3x. 
And then we get into the other individual uh, teams as makes sense, a marketing intelligence analytics team as well as uh, as well as a development resource or IT or anything else that we're actually using in, in the combination there. So in terms of when we get into a lot of, I'd say most of the people who are on this call are to the point where we have at least one dedicated marketing operations person, probably more like uh, one plus. And the team and how it eventually gets into having these final stage of the specialized team is you end up having, you know, platform operations person might have one person, campaign operations might have two. Um, and then we, we need to skill and change and trade along within that the, the amount of responsibilities, the type of responsibilities that each person is taking. So here's an example, MOPS manager as well as a MOPS specialist. This is to say the generalist team, a team of two MOPS people. And you can see here, I tried to make this actual chart representative of the different skills as well as you can see the individual bullet points are relevant to what people should be doing here. Um, that is the POPs, campaign ops, marketing intelligence, and then development. Um, that's, that's really what the two-person team looks like. And then finally we get into, again, we get into this final stage of specialized teams where each team is its own discrete. We have something like a VP of MOPs up top. Um, and this is conversationally, I think, probably as high as a VP, as a marketing operations person can get before losing the specialty of marketing operations. And then in this world, we have a POPs team, which is platform operation, COPS team, um, and then MI ops team, uh, as well as, uh, you know, if possible, if it makes sense, devs. Um, this is usually in a smaller proportion, though, for actual brand companies. Um, but this is really where it actually where it actually ends up scaling here is we have teams that these can actually improve. Usually I consider these to be um, individual modules. For example, in campaign operations, you would have a module of a campaign team dedicated to a region or a product line, uh, anything else like this. But really when you start to talk about we need to go uh, national, we need to have multiple products, everything else like this, you add in individual modules of different team units for campaign operations. I say that generally includes um, something like a PM uh, into a team as well as three individual COPS persons is, is kind of a single module. And then you can scale that up depending on uh, how many business units, what geos you're targeting, anything else that's going to make sense there. Great, so all of that is to say that's an overview on marketing operations. That's overall MarTech. Now, let's get into, with our final few minutes here, some of the tools and how we as marketing operations people can actually move metrics and actually change the business. The first one that I wanna to talk to is reports and dashboards solve problems. We as MOPS people, sometimes if we don't have actual um, responsibility in the organization. Most people as marketing operations, the teams are starting to be kind of under the radar service organizations before actually changing their position and taking greater ownership within marketing as I think will happen in the next few years. But one of the things that we have to do is to be able to surface problems. We as MOPS people see problems in the system all the time. And so in order to use that, we might not also have a a position and we might be in the awkward position of measuring other teams that are peers or we don't have any responsibility over. And so in that case, when you see a problem elsewhere in the organization, you need to use a tool which is a combination of reports and dashboards. You need to identify the individual metric that you see as broken, sub-industry standard. You need to surface that. Um, so for example, response time for um, for Net new hand raises, anything else like this. This needs to be uh, this needs to be less than five minutes um, overall. That is to say, somebody who fills out a hand raise form, it turns into a queue, and a salesperson has five minutes to respond to this. If you find that this is a metric that is kind of like underreported, probably in the marketing automation world, what you can do is you can actually measure this response time by lead owner. Um, and by doing this, you can come up with a reports and dashboards. So for example, in your CRM in Salesforce, you can create this and group, um, group and be able to show, you know, Edward Unthink might have an average response time of four minutes, uh, but we might find um, that 
Edward Unthank's evil twin has a response time of two days. And so in this case, I can say the second evil, evil twin here, um, I need to show this report and surface this to this person's manager, the SDR manager, and say overall goal is response time five minutes. Here's a graph that's real time and using real data that can show the response time over time by cohort. So for example, created by week, grouped by created by week. This will eventually show um, the overall, if somebody's doing their job or not doing their job. And specifically, this is a control point KPI, meaning if we want to improve this, all we have to do is determine we need to decrease this metric, and that's how you do it. And that will increase the overall results of the company. So dashboards and reports are a massively powerful way to surface problems as well as to have an obvious way to say, increase or decrease this metric. You know, you either need to say increase that if that's the goal of that individual metric, or you need to say we need to de decrease this. And this is the example of the um, response time. You need to make that as minimum as possible. So you take the top one there. And in the case that you need to really increase things like the, the actual follow-up uh, percentage of uh, MQLs, then, then you can do that as well. And then finally, uh, another piece that I find incredibly powerful is what I call switching into controlled tests. And this is the most, in my opinion, the most powerful tool of marketing operations is our ability to run and create controlled tests that can measure objectively and by a peer reviewable way how much impact on revenue individuals have had, individual programs have had. This is where we talk about marketing operations running into and controlling the overall roadmap, strategic roadmap of where marketing is working, where it's going, um, having that strategic roadmap and having a plan to get out of actively, proactively, to get out of being a cost center for marketing. The first, and I have generally three different phases that we have with this. We have build, measure, and optimize. And I'd say many companies are between straddling between one and two at the most part. Um, there's infrastructure and things that we need to do and the um, things like privacy compliance, anything else that needs to be built in marketing operations, in Marketo, in any of our marketing automation tools. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to happen and needs to be put into place. And so this needs to be put into place ahead of time. And you can see it even here. I see there are different speeds of roadmaps depending on the kind of company size. And these are, of course, a massive oversimplification. Uh, but generally, I find you know the enterprises uh, take much longer to build, but they can complete their amount of measurement very, very quickly. As opposed to a startup can build massively quickly, you might be able to knock out an entire Marketo configuration and infrastructure in three to six months, but you're gonna have such slow speed that you're not gonna actually be able to get accrue many results as quickly as you would with an enterprise company that has a mega amount of visitors. And then optimization is really where we need to get. Optimization is to the point where we can say we're out of just being the individual cost center, but we can contribute. We as marketing operations can contribute to revenue for the overall company. And so this is how I generally see it work. We have first, we've got a few months of, of overall phase for build. Um, this takes a while uh, and this should be actually road mapped out as, as happening there. The second one we get is this measure. Um, measure takes a long time and you should be doing it always. It's kind of a never ending. This goes to an infinite amount, uh, no end point. And then optimization is where we get to the point where we can say we can measure our contribution to marketing, overall email channels, ability to contribute to, to actual marketing revenue, everything else like this. Um, so the I've called this hypothesis-based marketing because it really gets to the point where uh, we are having a consistent optimization approach for all of these things. Uh, Hypothesis-based marketing is to say that we get a first baseline of how marketing is doing, and then once we have that baseline, we go into throwing out individual hypotheses about what would be higher converting, and a hypothesis of different strategy, targeting, anything else, that would result in, by hypothesis, a greater conversion rate from one stage to the next, uh, such as maldem equal. 
And so I'll just give you an, a quick example of what this actually looks like um, because we can then have test A and then challengers um, actually uh, working through and, and contributing to this HBM approach. Um, so here's, here's an example of how you would do it. This is the most basic thing that you can do on hypothesis-based marketing. And that is to say you run a global holdout on your marketing operations instance where you can say upon creation, all leads upon creation, we're going to take 2% of those leads and we're going to unsubscribe or um, unsubscribe or marketing suspend, anything else that we want. The point is that these, these people, as soon as they're created, will not get any marketing emails from us. And what we want to do of, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to measure what the difference between marketing accepted to marketing qualified conversion rate is based on do they get marketing versus how about the group that doesn't get marketing to be able to measure the difference. Um, and this is really where we can see the global impact of marketing, how much marketing is theoretically and be able to compute out how much is marketing contributing to revenue for the company overall with a controlled test, something that can stand peer scrutiny. So you might say that A, which is to say holdout group, um, holdout group A might get a 2.5% conversion rate mal than equal, which is say low, versus B, which is say just generally being marketed to, was probably something more like 5 to 7, let's just say 5%. And then in this case, you can determine that if we didn't do marketing at all, we would only have a 2.5 conversion rate, which is to say we would have our actual um, all else equal, we would have our revenue. Uh, or the amount of customers that we create if we didn't do marketing at all. And that gives you an actual dollar amount as a percentage that you can take control of and that can be the foundation of all of the rest of the reporting and marketing conversations that you have from that. And similarly, you can come up with any other test in terms of if you want to target, if you want to determine, do, should we do batch and blast or should we do evergreen optimized nurture, you can run that as a test. If you want to test uh, targeting generic nurture as opposed to persona based or industry based or uh, product interest based, any of that you can do that. And this is the key where we can get marketing operations being rich in charge of an unlimited upside metric, aka contribution to revenue. And that's really, I think, where that's the most empowered that marketing operations can get. And that's really where we need to get as an overall uh, vocation and organization and group of people who are running marketing for these companies. So now we are now at the end here. Thank you so much for spending the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. I've been spending the last seven years trying to work through this, six, seven years, my, my whole professional career working through marketing operations, defining it, trying to make this a sustainable vocation that can last multiple generations. That's my primary goal right now is to make sure that um, this isn't just an individual fad of marketing operations, but that we can, as individual people in this vocation, we can build a sustainable vocation that can last uh, many years, many generations, and can become a key driving piece of B2B marketing organizations en masse, uh, en masse and for a long duration. So please join me for, for helping to create this vocation. I, I encourage you to reach out to me on, on Twitter. My name is Edward Unthank, handle is Edward Unthank there. Uh, I'm very involved in any of these conversations, spending a lot of time thinking about philosophically, what is marketing operations? How do we build it? How do we improve it? So thank you everyone for the time. I really appreciate it. And um, we have in store for you some other great presentations and I hope you check them out. I'll see you there. Bye. Great. Welcome, everyone. Um, now we're in the last final section of this. I'm going to answer some Q&A, um, some questions that we got. We're going to do rapid fire style. I have two minutes. Let's see how fast we can go here. First question I had in the chat was, how do you measure the, the response time for a salesperson? The answer is a few different things. First of all, you need lifecycle processing so that you can mark people where they are in each stage, such as a marketing accepted, marketing qualified, and a sales accepted. What you need to do really is date and timestamp when somebody hits an MQL versus a sales accepted lead. A sales accepted lead is an activity actually logged on somebody. And then what you do is you subtract those two and that those 
date time A versus date time B leaves, um, leaves this actual amount of follow-up time there. Uh, second question that I see here. Um, second question was, do, do cops usually manage campaigns that affect the back end or all campaigns? That's a great question. Uh, the answer to that is really, I say the basic most, anything that you can turn into a program template and then run and create a campaign via a program template should be cops job. A program template, fully tokenized program template. If you're talking about a, a very large, uh, multi-nurtured strategic thing, then Pops has to get involved for the traffic director and architecture. But for the most part, uh, they they mostly don't. It's just campaign operations. Um, in terms of the tool that you can do to pull the response time report, um, you can date and timestamp the individual fields in Marketo. That goes to Salesforce. And in Salesforce, you can come up with a formula field which subtracts field A minus B and then chart that over time in Salesforce. Um, next question that I saw here, SCRIM uh, as an acronym, we can provide a little bit more information at the end of this too, but, um, but, but SCRIM stands for scalable, clear, robust, intelligent, and modular. So thanks everyone for the time. I really appreciate that. What I'm gonna do um, is I think we'll probably follow up with a few assets that I, I recommended here. And other than that, I'll see you in the other sessions. Thanks so much. Thank you.